Hi, good day, it's Friday the 17th of December. So it's Advent day today. Um, right, so I did, yesterday it was my first proper day off and I swear, no word of a lie, in a year. And I don't count those days when I've had the laryngitis and a head cold over the last month. I mean, a proper day where I've not thought, oh, I need to think of colors for next week. So next week I am not doing any listings on Monday. I have not done any dying for next week for listing. So it's actually an official day off for me. And wow, did I feel so relaxed yesterday. I didn't even get dressed until gone 11 o'clock yesterday morning, which is so not like me. Um, so I've ended up, I did post a picture of day 16 on my Instagram account and it would have gone through my Facebook as well. Um, so day 16, was time and it's absolutely delightful it's got the tiniest little hints of sparkle in there and it was a blend with um, natural Manx Lohan I love that will I really really love Manx Lohan I love the colors that it comes out with so it's called time now my head must have been thinking of lemon time at, at the time of blending this but it has got those colours of a lemon thyme leaves where it's got that mottledy, yellowy, but not quite green colours in it. So that's what I went with. And in this, it's Manx Lohan, and there's um, Tussa Silk in there, which is in the golds, and a slight hints of fawny colour in that as well. And there is um, Mulberry Silk, which is definitely the gold colour, so it's these streaks that go all the way through. And I'm looking at it now, and I forgot to write that there's Sari Silk in there. There's definitely sari silk because there's little tints of um, pinks and other tones in there as well. So there's a, there is a touch of sari silk. Um, there's bronze angelina all the way through it. Look how pretty is that. So I was thinking what to do with this and I might do another video in a couple of days where I can use this and I'll do, I'm gonna do a couple of more felting videos over the next day. Cause there's only so much spinning one person can do. But that's not to say I can't use the, the leftovers for spinning with, so there we go. So yeah, it's got Sari Silk in it, Mulberry Silk, Tussa Silk and Angelina with um, a Merino Bamboo Mixed Blend. Now I always say that you can't, bam you can't felt with, well the general rule is you can't felt with bamboo. But if, I always find, if you mix the bamboo fibers or they've come with a blended fiber that you've bought from a producer then as long as you've got a wool base and it's mixed in with that it will adhere and get trapped in with those fibers so as a rule bamboo on its own won't felt but if mixed with other fibers in an art bat or in a roving that you've bought and it's already in there in the fibers you can do um for definite you can do it it is possible but alone, no. So yeah, that's time. So that's 16. So you get two videos in one today. So that's 16 and I absolutely adore it. It is really, really nice. Look, Joe's got, you can tell Joe's not working and playing with dye pots because she's got nail varnish on and her nails have grown. They're not been stuck in a pot of water. Right. And today's one, day 17. Sorry, you might have noticed I've had a little move around in my room. So I did that yesterday as well. It's called my cleansing period. Whenever I've had a bad time, I got things. I have a proper spring clean out and get things sorted and throw stuff out. I'm a swine for it. But because I've been so poorly the last month or so, I've not been able to get anything done that I really would have been doing this time of the year, which is getting the house tidy for the new year. You can't bring in dirty stuff from the past to the future. You've got to go on as you mean to carry on. So this one, it's day 17 and I've called it sea spray. Now, yeah, it's not a gemstone and it's not a healing stone and it's not a herb, but I live on the coast. And for me, when I'm feeling rough or I've had a bad time or just feel a little bit stressed out, I walk down on the beach on a really windy, rainy day and you're being hit by that spray and you get back home and you're like, salt on my lips and you just feel like you've blown away the cobwebs. So I had to put a little bit of Joe in here 
So that's what I've done. So this one is sea spray and it's got llama and kid mohair and 18 micron count merino. So it's really, really fine. Excuse my beeping, somebody's gone on my website. I do apologize. Um, Angelina, um, no, Stelina. So Stelina is different from Angelina. It's a lot more fine. Um, glittery fibers and it is a type of nylon type fi man-made fiber so in this one you've got these really soft blues dusky blue tones not quite baby tones and it's got this yellow through and yes there are a few out there like oh I can't stand yellow well with the colors that if you've been spinning up as you've gone along each day all the colors will complement each other and if you were to create a crochet pattern like a small blanket or a swatch thing or a scarf you will find that with between all of those colors its partner either side will complement it so it will work you just got to use a bit of imagination so what I thought I would do today was some felting now I I, I want to do jellyfish because this inspired me to do jellyfish and I hunted everywhere on the on YouTube for a tutorial on how to make a three-day hanging jellyfish. I couldn't find one. I could go on to live in, our, uh, live in felts and they were doing two-dimensional on a felted backing, but that didn't help me at all. So what I did was this. How cute is that? So I wanted to show that you can use my art bats for doing felting. Like la uh, the last week I did, um, see the phone's pinging. Um, last week I did felting and I did the wet felted vessel. Now I'm gonna do another wet felted vessel um, using art bats to show you how to do that. So I thought, well, and I did the gnome but that was with roving and what else did I use? And my locks with the BFL. So I thought, well, I'll do a couple of videos over the next few days and I'll lead up to Christmas where I'm using actually my art fiber bats. And what this does is when, do you know, I do apologize. Oh, okay. I do apologize. I can't complain. There's an order just gone through. But I've got my computer open on one side I've been doing background work on my website. So it's tinging away and I forget. It's on standby. Honestly, it's on standby. And then there's... The <laughs> but I haven't got it on my phone. It's my computer. God, Joe. I'm supposed to be a professional. See? Anyway, I do apologise. Okay. So I wanted to do some felting projects where... I will show you how using a art bat saves you so much time in sorting out mixing fibers. So if you were to be doing a project and you needed like lots of different colors to help create tones and things like that or different dimensions on a project, a art bat is the perfect solution because I've already done all the work for you. You literally just have to pull your sections off. Hold on a second, I've got this one from when I was doing this. So this is from the... Um, then those are the remnants of the hula bat. So inside that, I've got all these colours already in there. Blended throughout, okay? And you literally just pull them apart to what you need. And all those colours are inside this jellyfish. So the colours aren't flat. I've given you all the colours that you're going to need for being able to create a project. So if I wanted it mostly peach with a hint of blue, then I would pull off that section. If I wanted a section with lots of texture, which textures are all the way through on all of my bats, it's very rare that you're just going to get it on the top, that all the way through. See, like here. So you've got the sari silk sections in the middle there, but you've also got them on the top as well. So they're always all the way through. So if you want to literally split your bat lengthways through the middle in half, and then put one to the side for another day, you're gonna have plenty of textures and little bits and pieces in that section. You're not gonna lose any character. And then you've got this piece to do it with. So, we're gonna have a play with this Day 17's um, felt in. 
and I'm gonna get on with this. And I'll, I'm not gonna do any, I might do a bit of music, I might do some fast forwarding bits, but all you're gonna need is an art bat and you're gonna want some locks. Now I do the really, really long locks on my website. Don't go for the Wensleydale curls, it's the Tease Water Long Locks. And I think I've still got plenty in stock some Wens uh, Wensleydale long locks. The Wensleydale curls are quite short. The, the range between, is that Wensleydale curls there? Uh, no, that's Falley. Wensleydale curls. I think that's Wensleydale curls. So my Wensleydale curls are really, I would say probably, on oh, a minute, tape measure here. From tip to end, about, but, yeah, I would say between six to maybe ten inches long varies. So you could do that if you're making smaller ones. But if you want to do the long tails like what I've done on mine, these roughly range, once they've been tucked inside, roughly range anywhere between 26 to 30, 32 centimetres long on some of them. And then I've used a lock in the top and felted it to the top so I can hang it. So there we go. So yeah, so you want your locks, you want uh, your bat, and you want some core wool, you want your needles, and you want a pad. So I just so happen to have this bright yellow core wool. Um, I do do carded bats for core wool if you want as well, because I've always got fleeces left over from British breeders. So I always try and make sure I've got a batch washed up and ready to card anytime. So if you want some of that, just let me know when you place your order and I'll let you know how much it is if it's not already on the website. Um, what else? Yeah, so I want my core wool, I want my bat, I want my needles, I want my stab it bag, which you can order them from me on the website as well. And I want to add in some texture as well. So I've tried felting these earlier on and I realized that they won't go in on their own, um, my little woolly net bits. So I'm gonna do a very thin layer over the top before I start to shape it to try and trap some of these and we'll have a little try, see where it goes. Because at the end of the day, it's all about experimenting and it's not. So, this isn't something that I do that often. So I have come up with an idea and it's stuck in my head and this is what I wanna try and do. So I'm gonna tilt you down and I'll have a natter with you as we go along. So I hope you enjoy this. Leave a, th leave a thumbs up below just underneath my titles, you'll see a thumbs down and a thumbs up. If you like this video, just hit that. And if you want to catch up with me um, anytime on the weekends, I'm always live on a Saturday on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm back. My phone has finally, fingers crossed, stopped ticking or pinging. Oh dear. I don't know where my notifications are. So we'll have to bear with it. Anyway, right, so I'm going to lean you down and you can see what I'm up to, okay? So I want to get some core wool and I want to just pull out a couple of little, not too much to start with, but a lump and then I'm going to just move my needles out of the way and then from that I'm going to just tuck it in underneath, okay? Into a, a little round ball. I'm going to get now everybody got uh, everybody just fell in got one of these um three pointed oh three pointed what's it no was it a three pointed one was it a one pointed one i think it might have been a one pointed um needle holder uh but they were colored ones that's why i thought it was this one it wasn't and um, they were colored ones so i put them in with the christmas advents for the felters um what else did they go and extra new needles because i do do felted needles but i don't always have them in stock um because they don't sell that often and i know i need to get them on the website um but i am actually looking for a proper wholesaler where i can get a job lot of different good quality ones it's quite hard to get them and the place that i get them from um already put their profit on there so i want to be able to find somebody that i can get them and then put a little bit extra on top without it costing too much money to use guys so then i'm going to get this other piece and i'm just going to start building up the main body of my jellyfish i'm just going to keep folding it over and stretching it so i don't end up with lumpy pieces
fan it out if you've got a bit that's too thick. Okay, and just keep layering it up. You, the best way to do this when you're felting it, because you don't want to put the layers on too thick to start with. Um, you want it so your needle can go through it, and you don't want to start with a massive thick piece like this. Um, because you'll be there forever trying to get it all in together but if you just build up your layers a little bit at a time and shape it as you go around just give it a little twizzle round and then get some more I want this one to be quite wide I want it a little bit bigger than the one I've already made so I'm just going to build up my layers a few more times And just keep going like that so I'm just going to fast forward this section because you know you can see what I'm doing but you can watch how many layers I want it and then I'll measure at the end and I'll um, see how wide I got mine so I'm on my third layer now so I think I'm going to try and aim for about four or five layers I do want it wider as I say than the one I've already got Spread that over the top there. Okay, so you want to now get a piece of your, um, some more core wool, just a little bit, it's ornament, so I've got my tape measure, I'll just pull this down, and this has ended up being about, about 11 and a half centimetres in circumference either side, so that's fine. Um, weight wise, hold on a second, I'll just get my scale in case you want to weigh out how much core wool you're going to need for the fight for your full project I'll just turn my scales on so for the base bit here I've ended up with 11 grams um, and the top bit that I'm going to add on now it's saying three for that so say 15 grams in all of core wool for this one project but at the end of the day if you like to know how much you're going to need then that's fine but if you're just winging it like <laughs> like i do then yeah it, it's not a, it's not a massive deal so i want to create another little ball and i'm going to put this on the top so it looks like a double donut and i'm just going to seal that into place try and make sure it is in the center it looks like an alien ship at the moment but i promise it won't it will look like that when we're finished you can just see the dome there so I'm just gonna make sure that's all in there and then I'm gonna get another piece of my core wool and I am just gonna put it over the top like that just to help not so much hide the lines, but it's to create that more natural dome shape instead of just seeing that on top of there. I'm 
Okay. So you should end up with a slightly alien UFO shape dome circle, which is actually the body of your jellyfish. Right, now, next. Grab. Just take a strip off your bat. Or pluck the colours out that you want in there, whatever is easiest for you. I'll just stick that to one side for a minute. And then I'm going to pull off some small sections and I'm just going to fan it out a bit and I'm going to layer that over the top and then I'm going to start to felt that in. A bit like when I did the wet felting the other day and it was all about layering. Well, that's what I'm doing now is I'm just layering in my bat and I'm quite happy with the colours that are popping through. So I'm just going to do this this direction. And I'll tuck them all in underneath in a minute. I just want to get this built up. Take another piece off. Fluff it out a bit spread it over the top there like that and look already the colors for the jellyfish are really starting to just amalgamate themselves if you were doing this with roving or with um, a just a standard colour, solid colour um, carded bat, then you would want to pick the colours out and blend them in little patches here and little patches there. Whereas if you think of it, this is a cheats way. All the work's already been done for you. All the colours are already been put into place. All you have to do is layer it. Bob's your uncle and Joe's your aunt. She's done it for you. Especially if you're wanting to do a couple of really quick projects with the grandkids or the kids at home if you've still got little ins about. I say little ins, you can't really do needle felting with them, but at that young age, but like eight, nine, ten year olds, if they want to do things, maybe they've got a school project and it's about sea life, and then they can make a mobile of jellyfish. God, Joe, you're waffling here. You're waffling. Right, so now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to start pulling my top fibres onto my base. A bit more of that side there. And it just neatens it right off. Now you don't want to be doing this to, um, you don't want, you, you don't have to have your foam pad or your jellyfish body really firmly um, felted. You want it enough so everything will just hang in there without any issues. And alternatively, you might want to use it as a pin cushion, which is what I was thinking for myself. So if you're using your jellyfish as a hanging pin cushion in your craft room, then you really, really don't want your felting to be too harsh felted. Otherwise, your coarse felting needles are not going to get into it. So you can put your felting needles in these, use them to hang it up so they're out your way. Um, you can use your sewing pins from sew machines in it and use it as a because yeah because my this one here isn't felted that wrong that harsh so if it was bigger oh no yeah it will go in so you could 
use it for felting for pen, pin cushions and things like that anyway I digress so I think I am just about done on the top I do want to add a little bit on the bottom just the tiniest little piece just to cover up this yellow even though there's yellow in this fiber anyway but this is the bit where I start to shape the underneath okay so what I do is I roll it on its side and I really get stuck in to going around in a circle to create that bulb look so it's like you know when the jellyfish you know, splays out and as it gets its energy it pushes up so as it's pushing up it's got its bulb feeling and a vat underneath it's like curved underneath but it also helps me give me a place to put my locks in or you don't have to use locks you could I suppose you could to a point felt in textured ribbons art yarns so I'm just going to keep doing this and I'll put you on fast forward So I've just grabbed some of those woolly nets and I just want to see if this is going to work and just felt this in into place with these woolly nets underneath. Let's see, will it work? Do you know, you never know until you try, do you? So there we go. That isn't too bad, actually. I've got a few sticking to my needle. Sit them back in the box. Yeah, the fibres are trapping them in there. So yeah, just a really thin, really thin bits. Just over the top of those. I just wanted a little bit extra something to it instead of it just being a flat. These ones don't want to stick, or do they? There we go. And then just make sure it's all neat and tidy as much as you want it to be. Mine is more rustic looking because I'm using the. Um, the alpaca fibers in this and the mohair so it has got a bit more of a fluffy texture to it right next bit I'm going to bring you over so you should be able to see what I'm doing and I'm going to sort of angle that light away a bit there we go that's a bit better so the next bit I want my single needle and what I'm going to do now is start shaping the bottom section where you would see the scalped edges so do one there and just if you've ever made a pumpkin you know exactly what I'm talking about you want to just jab your needle in like in a little line I find if I sort of drag my needle up and then drag it back down that helps me create a nice gradient in my line so so I drag 
my needle and felt at the same time and then drag it back lean it into the fibers at the same time right so I'm gonna get on with this and I'll see you in a sec So there you go you can see all those little juts in there so i would say let me take measure again if you want to do it by measurement you're looking at there we go uh zero three inches in diameter and some of them some of them are only two and a half inches centimeters some of them are only two and a half centimeters in wide but just play it by ear just be a bit creative you don't have to do everything methodically and there's my base underneath is proper really felted in there now and it's helped me create that shape underneath by turning that at the same time can you see that it's ended up more of a dome inside than it is a flat base so the next bit i want to do is i want to find some contrasting colors so i'm just going am i just going to use this actually i have a bat over here and i'm going to use some of this fiber here so have a rummage through what you've got if you want to use a contrasting fiber to do this next bit so i want to just twizzle it around and i'm going to use this to define my little gaps so you want to wet the beginning of your jellyfish and go, mark it through the line and hold it in place on both sides and then you just want to really gently near your fingers get your end and just jab that in there and underneath okay and then i'm just gonna mark off where i need this i'm gonna twizzle it again and bring that through the other side but i'm gonna Where's my scissors when I need them? Where's my scissors when I need them? Hold on a sec. Up here. Okay, so I'm just gonna snip that there. Take this piece away, cause it's a bit too long. And just felt that into place there. Bring it back down the line, just ever so gently, cause I don't want to lose my defining line. And then really jab it underneath that socket so it sits like that, okay? So I'll show you one more time and then I'll fast forward up this piece. So I wanna really swizzle that around. Go into the top of your line that you marked and dented in. Felt it into place. Just build it up a bit. Felt it into place. It's run down my groove. Just give that a little notch in there. Get the rest of my fibres. Give them another swizzle around. Felt into place at the top of my groove.
go back down on the bottom and make sure that is all felted into section so you end up the two bits in there so one two and then three and four so just use one length and then fill up one hole come down and then back up the other side and then felt them into place this one's come loose a little bit okay so I'm going to carry on doing that and I'll see you in a bit. So there we go, with me defining bits of my um, jellyfish body. Now I want to look for locks. So I think I'll just use these that I've got here. I was going to use different colours. Have I got any different colours around? I've got a tray, I've got a box full of flaming things, to be fair. But these are the first ones I found. Right, so get your locks and go for your open end. Leave you really skinny, taily bit dangling over the side there. And then just literally felt it into place. Don't have to do it too much because you're going to be adding more onto here. So just open up that lock a little bit. And I'm going to go straight in for the other side. And I'm going to hit the middle and then hit it on the outside, back in the middle. And then just keep building up. I've got a yellow one here. I think I'll add this yellow one in. Layer that in there. Tap it in the side. It's a darker blue one. Just open this up a little bit. Now I'm going to go in from this side. Okay, I've got a bit of green here. I think I'll add this in. Where's the beginning and end of this one? There we go. So now I'm going to fill in my gaps on the outside and I'm just going to keep building it up. Thank you. 
So once you've got sulfur on your locks, you want to have a look underneath and then just see where you are with your placing of your locks. You might decide that you've got some gaps in there you just want to fill in just so it doesn't look so uneven. Okay, so I'm just going to add in, I think, uh, I think I've got a bolt bit here that I wouldn't mind filling up a little bit. And I think, yeah, it's just this section here that I want to find some longer pieces just to fill up my gaps. So I'm just having a quick rummage through another bag. No, nope, they're not long enough. So I'm gonna get my, whoop, stay there. I'm just gonna separate these a little bit and place them right in the middle. Now, when you felt in your locks on, at first I was um, building up around the sides and you'd felt them in, and they're your main ones. But then when you get to the to the center, just felt them in the middle, and then that's it. Don't go to the edge, and then that'll help build up your layering a little bit. That's quite cool, I like that. I like the way that's looking now. There we go. So last thing I want to do is I'm gonna use one of my locks. Well, two locks together is what I was did last time. Two locks together. Just trying to find long ones. No, it's not, they don't want to work. Right, two locks together really is what I'm ideally looking for and then I could put a knot in the top of it and then I want to just get my one needle find the center and then just felt that lock in or you can use wool if you want um, not sure about how a ribbon would work in this but I suppose you could always hand stitch it on just gonna whiz that in there a little bit more just tuck it in there we go that'll do so there you have it Joe's own felted jellyfish now you could do do it without having the dome on the top and just have it more or less flat and then maybe thin out and shape in it and, and be a bit more dramatic and artsy fartsy than that but this just gives you an idea and a starting block of where to go um you can use as i say for your tassels if you've not got any locks use textured wools ribbons you may have to sew some of those into place just with a little tack or something like that but there we have it one felted jellyfish well two felted jellyfish really I've got two of them I might actually make another one then I've got three and I've got a piece of driftwood downstairs so I can hang them up in my work my studio downstairs so I hope you enjoyed that video um it's the weekend so it's Saturday tomorrow's my live chat and Sunday oh I don't know what I'm doing Sunday so what I think I'll probably do is day 18 and 19 do another combined project together on Sunday and film 18 and 19 together because uh, I do my live chat tomorrow and I've got bits and pubs that I really need to get on with I need to get the housework done don't I need to have my house clean before New Year's so it's clean up clean up clean up and I want to get stuck in at my studio get a bit more work done in here and some unpacking um, so yeah that's what I'll do this week weekend it just saves me a bit of time and then I can combine the next two days um, in one project and I think it might be another felting project I'll see what I can come up with any ideas what you'd like to see me do um, felting wise just drop a comment down below or message me on my Instagram account and I will see if I can if I can't find it on YouTube I will create it I'll always find a way of doing something so there we go you take care of yourselves have a lovely weekend if you don't come over and join me on my Instagram Coffee Break live chat about noon tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I will see you over the week. Take care wherever you are.